tonight we're going to be looking at the um, the hamstring. Um, now I have to confess, this is this isn't something that I do an awful lot of. Um, it doesn't usually uh, c come into the hospital uh, that often. Um, it usually either goes straight to MRI because it's more of a sort of traumatic traumatic thing. But those of you that have got like working in sports injury clinics or something and not access to MRI and think this, then this is this is obviously what you you can do. But uh, MRI is still the gold standard for this uh, sort of imaging. Um, now, the reason I say that is, I just think is, if you're lucky enough to have one of these great machines, uh, Sonoscape, um, you can you can get a wide footprint probe, and you'll need one of these to look at the hamstring because it's quite a wide wide area you're looking at, and you're looking for certain landmarks. So if you've got a little probe with a small footprint, you can still do it, but it's going to be it's, it's quite challenging. So if you can, if if you're doing more of this in your clinic, more sort of um, you know hamstring imaging like that, then uh, a wider footprint probe is ideal. Um, this is from an, uh, an article from Skeletal Radiology 2019, and all the images that I'm showing you are from that article. It's it's, it's a really good article for this. Um, so what whatever you don't pick up from me, by all means go to this article. Um, so basically, you, you want to treat the hamstring as a uh, like like a tuning fork, okay? Because you can see that tuning fork on the back of his leg there, okay? You've got the handle, um, it's like an upside down tuning fork if you like. So the handle goes to the uh, ischial tuberosity where the where the hamstrings insert, and then obviously you've got the two prongs to the um, tuning fork, and you've got one side, you know, the lateral side being the uh, biceps femoris, short head and long head. And then obviously the medial prong is going to be your semitendinosis and semimembranosis. Okay, so that's what you want. To, that's the picture you want to have in your, your mind when you're, you're scanning this. And obviously you can see the, the um, relevant anatomy to your side there, to the, to the side of that image. Biceps femoris and then semitendinosis and semimembranosis uh, underneath. And you can see the sciatic nerve sort of follows the uh, biceps femoris there down the middle. Okay, um, I'll try and show you that on the scanning with the scanning Avid. Um, and then uh, see how we get on, I'll show you a few landmarks to look out for. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is find the landmark. You want to write You want to write No, no, that's cool. No, that's cool. So I'm, I'm basically popping straight in the middle of the thigh here, and what I'm looking for is, uh, let me get my pointer. So do you see this white band going up through this muscle here? Okay, and if you watch, if I go up and down, can you see how that shoots across the screen of that muscle? Okay, so this is called the RAF. Um, it's, it's like a intramuscular septum if you like um, and it's like a veil that comes across the muscle okay now that's characteristic to semitendinosis only so if you see this just go up and down and say right I know that muscle there is semitendinosis so I've got my landmark now of semitendinosis this is a uh, sciatic nerve here okay so, as I scan down, I can follow semitendinosis down, okay, and you'll notice that, that this is basically, as you come into the, to the knee, so here, here it is here, sorry, down, as we go down into the knee, that then becomes, uh, what we call the cherry on top of the cake. Let me just get some gel here. And we covered this in the knee before. And this is where, so there, there, that's now the, the cherry, that's the semitendinosis tendon on top of the cake here, which is the semimembranosis. So the semimembranosis uh, distally in the knee is big and the semitendinosis is small. And then that's the opposite when you get up towards the initial tuberosity. So the semimembranosis is more tendinous and the semitendinosis is more musculature. 
Okay, so if you follow this, this down, okay, you go into this sort of medial, medial popliteal area, and then semi membranosis goes away, and medial gastroc comes in, and then we've got semi membranosis tendon, and this is where you see the baker cyst here. Okay. I think that's a little bit easy for you to see that. So this this here now is me is medial gastroc. There is semimembranosis. There. And then this is semitendinosis. So you can follow that back up. There's there's that veil look, see? See how it's going across? There. Okay. So we've also got biceps femoris laterally to that. Okay. And then you've got sciatic nerve here. Okay. And this is what they call a sort of Mercedes sign. So you get in, as you go up, you get this sort of triangular Mercedes sign. Yeah, and if I take that, carry on up, it becomes the conjoint tendon. So we're now going into the fork of that tuning fork, into the handle of that tuning fork, sorry, up to, and there is the ischial tuberosity here. There, now I've got an image to show you on the, on the slide, which will uh, clear this up for you. So that's issue to tuberosity, and this is where they insert. So you've got sort of semi membranosis down here, and then the conjoint tendon of semi of biceps femoris and uh, uh, semi tendinosis here. Okay, now we go. There's that characteristic veil. Now here, I don't know whether you can make this out, this is the semi-membranosis tendinous portion and it sort of wraps around here, okay, and that will come into the semi-membranosis muscle here. Yeah. So semi-membranosis, here's, here's the tendinous portion, here's a bit of the, the muscle here, semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis, and you'll see there's the rough, there's the veil. As, you, as, you, as I go towards the issue of tuberosity, all these converge, so semi-membranosis comes up and joins conjoint tendon of biceps femoris and the tendinous portion of semi-tendinosis to go to the issue of tuberosity. You right there, Abid? Good. Okay. So this is so we, this is biceps femoris. So as I get as I go down the biceps femoris, you'll see I've got sort of two layers here now. So I've got this is biceps femoris long head, this is biceps femoris short head. Okay, and as I move down, you'll see biceps femoris long head becomes smaller. Biceps for his short head starts to take over. And of course, this goes down to the fibula head, running out of gel just at the bottom, that's typical. Down to the fibula head. There. 
back out again, short head, long head. You see the difference here. I've got a picture to show you that there's a possible tear here. Not, not you, Abby, but I've um, got a picture of that. Okay. When, when the tear, <coughs> if there was a tear there, would you always see increased vascularity? Not always, but you'd, you'd see probably a little bit of fluid um, and, the, and the, the muscle might be a little bit hyperechoic. Uh, I've, got a picture, I've got a picture of that so I can show you. Uh, but by all means, put the doctor on, you might get a little bit of hyperemia there. Um, Why do you think some show it's up there? Um, There's a tree muscle tear, isn't there? So we pretending. I it one. might depend on, on how long ago or when it was you know, just done or a bit more chronic. Um, but yeah, so, so, sometimes, sometimes the longer it's been there, the least likely it's yeah. going to be to hypervascularize. Yeah. Um, so here we go, so we'll take that up. Probably got a little bit too, oops. That's not one. Probably a little bit too much gain. Yeah. You get very referrals for soft tissue masses? Yeah, I've got quite a few of those and, and they are very scary uh, soft tissue masses. Um, in the hamstring, do you find but I mean the see maybe? Um not in the hamstring, but more on the anterior thigh maybe. Um Tend to have little lumps and bumps, but be very careful with diagnosing lumps and bumps. They they still scare scare me to death, and it's kind of a lot of them. Um, okay, so that is I mean that's basically the hamstring. So let me go let me go through the um, the pictures on the PowerPoint again, and then we'll come back and just go through this again with that characteristic bear. It might make a bit more sense to you. So yeah, that, there's, that, there's that characteristic fault that we did. Um, so went up to, the, up to the conjoint tendon. Can you see the arrow? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, yeah, so scanned up the, the, the um, handle of the fork here. So where the conjoint tendons of this portion here. So you've got the biceps femoris, semitendinosis, conjoint tendon, and it inserts onto the ischial tuberosity, okay? And then the, the membranous, the semi-membranous portion is just literally just a, like, like a little bit of tendon that comes across that sort of tadpole appearance that I showed you earlier. I'll show you that again in a minute. Okay. And then there's your, there's, there's your um, lateral fork and there's your medial fork there. And you can see this, this you can just see the, um, this is the short head of biceps here coming down onto the, onto the uh, fibula head there. Now, okay, so this is what you're looking for when you get to the issue of tuberosity. And it's, and it's never, it's never going to be, a, it's never a clear image. I've yet to see a really clear image. Um, if you get a really, really skinny person there, that, that, that you can look really nice. Um, but this is, this is usually what you get. You get like this sort of um, hyperechoic area. But if, if it's really swollen, thickened, then you might suggest some sort of tendinopathy there. Um, there's a ductor magnus at the more medial here, but um, that's really difficult to see. I don't, I don't often see that at all. So you've got the conjoint tendon here um, and semi-membranosis in the sciatic nerve, gluteus maximus, ischial tuberosity. And that's basically this, this portion here that you're looking at. Okay, what else have you got here? Yeah, so this go on. Is it possible to see the central tendon? Yes. So yeah, so the central tendon is uh well it's gonna be it's gonna be this portion here probably. This is the central tendon. Um so you, as you as you run down you'll see you'll you'll see you'll see that. So this is the, this is the sciatic nerve, this is the membranosis, um adductor magnus under here. So this is when they're all converging here, just before you hit that handle of the fork that goes into tissue tuberosity. 
I suspect, um, I suspect the question um, was when they when you scan, you can, can you show it? As a oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Really um, biceps morris, adductor magnus. Here's here's that long section of the the veil there. So that's what you're looking for in the semi tendinosis. That veil that comes across when you scan up and down. That is essentially what it looks like in longitudinal section. Um, so that's that, and I think, yeah, so this is, a, this is quite a close-up of the issue of tuberosity, and, and this is what you're looking for for tears. So you can see that all this is the insertional point, and you've got a little high, hypoechoic cleft there and here, and these would be little, like little intratendinous tears. Yeah. So this is, this is magnified, because that's that issue of tuberosity there, is basically here. So they've got a really good image there. Um, but you can see that this person is very thin. Can you see here, that's the, that's the top of the, the uh, skin surface and that literally is a very, very thin person. So that's, that's why they've got such a good, good, good image here. Um, so this is when you're going down the, this is going down the lateral side with a long head uh, uh, biceps morris in the short head um, and you can see this this is sort of uh, central tendon if you like uh, here and this is and this is where you've got a little gap here um, there you can see that and you can see actually the muscle belly is um, hyperechoic compared to this asymptomatic side you can see the difference in brightness here that's, you see that quite a bit. Um, and this is essentially what a, like a muscle strain will look like. Um, so you get sort of brightness within the muscle. But you can make up that tear there. And this, this ultimately is going to take longer to heal than just a tear in the muscle belly because this is going to the sort of, uh, sort of central tendon, if you like, there. And I think, yeah, okay. So let's go back and just, just recap on those bits. So straight into the middle here, and I find this um, rough or um, veil of semi tendinosis. Okay. I can do that. If I come out laterally to that, I know that that's semi tendinosis. If I come out laterally, I know now I'm in the um, biceps, pores, okay. Okay, and then this is, this is sort of like the central tenderness portion of the uh, biceps and long head, short head, okay. Like that. And then obviously the, the long head goes away so this is, this is where the long head finishes, just here. And this is now all short head. And you can follow the short head down. Okay. Down onto the fibula. Back up. Into long head. Long head up. And you can look, look, for, look for tears because you, you can see disruptions in all these um, in these muscle bellies. They will look, they will look strange. They're a bit hyperechoic. Um, gaps, or the, or the actual muscle might be hyperechoic. Okay, so that's biceps. Over, over medially, you've got this that rail, so you know you're on semi tendinosis again. Okay, and then you know over here is semi membranosis, and you can see that this, this other sort of central portion of the tendon coming down. And you've got like a, um, this is the tadpole I was telling you about. So this is this is basically the semi-membranosis tendon here. Here and now to be semi-membranosis muscle belly. Okay, and that's that's quite a common area to, to get injury along here. And this will just be all widened and hyperechoic. Um, well, as I say, I don't, I, I, I very rarely see any, any of these to be fair. 
they don't usually come to, don't, don't usually come to ultrasound. Um, so, here again, membranosis, as we scan around, scan, scan up, up the uh, handle of the fork, if you like, so membranosis comes in, joins the conjoint tendon of semi tendinosis and biceps femoris up onto the tuberosity, which is here. So I can try and get a little bit better there, take the frequency down a bit. That's, that's basically what we're going to get there. So that's the issue of tuberosity and those two bits, those two tendons there. So the magnus is going to be sort of more medial around here. Um, and then back out and now as you come out uh should see sciatic nerve it's thinking that's it there because it, it, it just follows underneath biceps more so this is sciatic nerve there here sciatic nerve sciatic nerve Sciatic nerve. nerve, and then obviously they'll split into tibial and perineal. There, yeah. you get to the knee. Now, the insertion of obviously semi tendinosis is um, obviously on the uh, anteromedial aspect, so that's the pes anterior. So, you, so you, you, you covered that in the knee before, so you know that insertion. And there's certain insertion of um, semi-membranosis is I'm just trying to find this. So if you come to the medial down. So you come to the medial joint line, just come down at the body a little bit until you see that groove there. The screen here. That is the semi membranosis insertion there. Just there. Take off that one. Um, I think that pretty much covers the hamstring. Um, any, any, any questions, Steve? Not, not at the moment, no. Does anybody want me to go over any, anything um, anything else? Let's see what comes back. Yeah, there could be some movement. Some yeah, certainly you can see some, some movements. You can certainly separate. You can start to pick the landmarks out and separate the, the muscle components, uh, which is always, always a good thing to do. Another way is, um, if, you, if you scan quickly, if you scan up and down quickly, you can start to make out which which muscles are different, and you can start to pick out. Okay, that one, that one there is different, moving different to that one, so that's a different muscle. That one there is moving differently to that one, so that's a different muscle. So just just by moving quickly up and down, you can quickly d distinguish, um, um, you know, your different your different bits, different muscle components. But your land, your landmarks. Uh, Centre of the thigh, look for that characteristic veil going through semi tendinosis, tendinosis, and that you, you can't go far wrong from there because you know laterally, laterally the biceps, medially is membranosis. Um, and then you can just follow the tendinosis up to the issue of tuberosity and then just go down either, either prongs of your fork or the biceps, long head and short head. And obviously, for membranosis, is, is you'll take tendinosis down until it becomes cherry. Cherry on top of the cake, there's your membranosis. Okay. And as you scan, as you lose, as you lose the belly of membranosis, you'll find that medial gastroc will come into play, and that's your vacuum cyst area there.
So you've got um, semigranulosis tendon, medial head of gastroc, baker cyst area here. Um, that, shows, yeah, that usually comes under the name to be fair. So a couple of questions um, have come in. Okay. Are fabellas usually asymptomatic? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Are the fabellas usually asymptomatic? I may have pronounced that wrong. These guys do test me. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't. Are you talking about the, what, the, the, the little fabellas behind the knee, the little sort of sesamoids? Let's see what uh, Peter comes back with. I'm not really, don't really scan anything like those. I mean, I guess if you, if they've got pain and you can see the, there's like a little, little sesamoid there, you might think it might be related, but I've, I've not really come across anything specifically related, related to the favela. Okay. I'll see if Peter comes back on that. Another question, could you just go through the Mercedes sign again? Yeah, so as you go, as you go up here, so, that, so there's the veil. As you come up here, you've got the sciatic nerve and the tendons coming in here. It's, it's quite difficult to appreciate here, but as you go, uh, so I don't know if you can work out that sort of, there's a, one going off there, one going up there, and one going down here. Um, which is basically where the sciatic nerve and the tendons all come up just before they go up to the conjoint tendon you get this sort of triangle thing there now uh, i can show you probably better on the on the on the powerpoint but that's that's essentially what they, they're calling the sodium sign it's just like a can you see that sort of try that sort of the triangle star point there you have to use probably a little bit of imagination mm, i can't see it <laughs> i can see anyway doesn't matter what i can see he just come back and said yes i think that must be the point you said about behind the knees behind the oh yeah the, yeah, the yeah that was that okay peter we've we answered that for you let me know if you want us to come back to that So, so yeah, so I mean, I, as I say, I don't, I, I don't scan many of these. It's 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 one of those things that you know you don't come across that every day. Um, and you know, if, if you're going to get trauma to this area, you know, you might have a, quite a big tear in here. And they just they just you're not, you're not going to get the acute ones necessarily in the hospital, I suppose. No, right? exactly. Get a, and the chronic ones would eventually go for MRI because they just yeah you know, yeah. Um, you might get, um, you might be able to see previous injuries like scar tissue, and that that will just look like a like a little, like a little triangle or hyperechoic defect. Um, and actually, it's always it's always worth putting your Doppler on that because you can get. Um, now I've got actually I've not actually seen this or picked this up, but you can get um, uh, the activation of these little scarred areas and, and, and that's when you get Doppler within within the scarring and, that, and they call that reactivation of that scarred area but I've, I've, I've not actually found that myself to be fair but I know it, it, uh, apparently it does exist um, yes yeah, so it's 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 not as complicated as you think if you break it down into the anatomy and you find you find your characteristic landmarks like your veil, your biceps femoris, your um, your little tadpole where your membranosis comes in, um, and there's your membranosis muscle belly. And this is a Dr. Magnus down here. This big this big one here. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty straight. It's pretty straightforward. So that's okay. we, haven't in, we haven't looked in long section, so let's show you that. That's that's the that's the one I showed you in long section with that veil. So there's the veil. So if I go long section, you can see how that veil goes through the muscle belly there on top. You just get the pointer here. Oops. Here. 
So there's that veil. Getting through there. Um, any, anything else there, Steve? Yeah, there is. Um, Peter has just said it might be outside the presentation, but I'm sure if we can oblige, we will. Tumors of the muscle. Can we, can we talk about this? Difficult to see. Tumors. Yeah. I said that right, Peter? Yeah. Um, okay. Anything that you see intramuscular, um, assume it's nasty, send it on. Um, and th unless they've had unless they've had trauma and you think it might be a hematoma, um, if they've had no trauma, then anything, any sort of mass intramuscular is, in my in my opinion, sinister until proven otherwise. Um, but uh, yeah, don't, I wouldn't try it. unless you, unless you know they've had trauma and you think it's a hematoma, then I wouldn't just be careful with trying to. Um, say what things are because okay. ultimately they need to go to MRI or further imaging or something just to clarify that. All righty, thank you. I've got a couple of uh, but on that as well, which is always great to get another question from Elaine. I'll be with you shortly, Elaine, on that. Well, this topic still. A bit of input from uh, Chris. Thanks for the contribution, Chris. I am lucky enough to to see sporting hamstring tears once a five and hematomas are sometimes easy to, easy to see as hyperechoic. Horseshoe areas cast people. There's a bit of input there from Chris. Thank you, Chris. Is that oh, lovely. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, uh, and Peter's asking, are they non-compressible? What, what um, hematomas? Uh, no, that, that would have been, the, that'd have been the, the point before. So, so tumours? Tumors, yes. I um, um, no, they'll be they'll be they'll be solid. I would think they'll be quite hard. Um, I, I, as I say, I've not seen many in in the back of the thigh. I've, I've seen quite a few in the anterior thigh, um, and then they, they they don't look pleasant. Uh, I'll be honest, and they're, they're hard. Um, but obviously, what you want to what you what you set with the tumors. Um, if it's deep, if it's intramuscular, you, you, you automatically try and think this, you know, this, this could be, this could be worrying. Stick the doctor on. Um, if it's superficial, if it's sort of oval shaped, not sort of round, so sort of wider than, uh, wider than taller, um, they they tend not to be. Um, any, anything penetrating the deep fascia into the muscle is worrisome. Um, any, anything over, I think it's five or six centimetres is usually all, uh, always sent for a more area. I think, it, I think it's five or six. Um, but any, any large uh, should be sent for further imaging. Um, but yeah, if you're unsure, then uh, yeah, just just I just refer it on because there's you know they're, they're dodgy. They're, it's a real tiger country, as they say. Okay. Um, um, let me know if we any still to cover on that, Peter. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to Elaine, who's been waiting patiently with a request earlier, or earlier, I should say. Is it possible to see the insertion onto the ischial tuberosity in long axis? Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a request. Yes, you, oh, yes, you can, um, but just bear in mind that it's quite uncomfortable for the patient because you, you're you're going up up into the buttock, and then essentially you're turning the probe in long section. Um, so that, that that image that I showed you with the tears um, earlier, that was a long section image of the issue of tuberosity. Um, uh, but but you, I showed you that the that that was an extremely thin patient because you can see the skin surface and it's literally just uh, just underneath and it was the issue of tuberosity so that's when you're going to get really nice images really good uh, sections great come back to me elaine if you want more on that but thank you for the question um 
don't think I've missed anything else. Um, so, Abby's looking at his trochlea now, in his <laughs> knee. How's he do? <laughs> Can't help himself. Thank you, Elaine. Yeah. I've been squatting a lot. I'm just if there's any difference. So you can you can scan obviously the biceps morris obviously posteriorly when you're looking at the hamstring, but you you could probably look at it anteriorly when you're looking at the knee as well. You just need to remember that you've got that lateral collateral ligament as well on the fibula. So just try not to get those two mixed up. Um so basically, if, you, if your probe's pointing towards towards the back, towards posteriorly, then you, you're on biceps morus. If it's angled towards the, uh, the condar, then obviously that's the lateral collateral ligament. Um, but they both they both insert there, you see. So you have to just have to be careful with that. That's yeah, awesome. fine. So that's that's the long section of the ischial tumor. So this is where it's it's a uh, long section of the hamstring coming up uh, and ins and inserting there, and you can see the little tears there but you can see look this is the skin surface okay so that's very thin patient so that's when you're going to get really nice really nice images um, that was that hyper hyperechogenicity i was telling you about when you get injury to the muscle um, they tend to be a little bit brighter than the asymptomatic one um, Quick question. If, if now oh, there we go. There's, so I think this is what we were talking about with the, um, well, it's, it's, it's not quite there yet, but it, it, this will go up into the, into the Mercedes sign with that sciatic nerve. Um, where's my arrow gone? There. So as you move further proximally, this will come up and it'll, it'll, it'll look like this, but just a little bit higher up when these two join. Uh, that was the Mercedes sign. Sorry, Steve, carry on. No, thank you. That's great. Uh, can you just repeat about the difference in probe angle between BF and the LCL, please? Uh, was that that one? Um, I think you were talking about the, the, the probe angle that you... you... Uh, Sorry, just get clarification on that, Steve. Yeah, I will do. Here we go. Uh, biceps, femoris, and the LCL. Is that? Oh, okay. Thank you. So, uh, actually, so let's. Uh, can you find a few space uh, face down anterior? So, on the. Can you see Abby's knee? Can you see Abby's knee? So if you look on, on my phone, you'll see up his, up his knee, so he's, he's anterior now, he's not lying on his tummy. So we've got the fibula head. So when I, when I angle towards the, the condyle, if you, if, you look at the, if you look at the screen, I'm getting, um, multi, I'm multitasking now, so this is going to be a fair show. Um, this, this is the collateral ligament going down here. Obviously, it's not under tension, so it's a bit wavy. Going along there, okay. Now, the biceps moris, if I angle down towards the back of the leg, I'm still on the fibula, because it's here, but you can see that now I'm on the biceps moris. It's going back, and that will go into the muscle belly. Okay. If you look at, if you look on my phone, you'll see my position. Again, angling backwards there. Who's in a little bit of focus, I think, uh, Adrian? Is what, sorry? A little bit of focus, I think. Oh, uh, my, my phone? Focus. And there, we've got... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm multitasking, so I'm forgetting things. Well, Essentially... So I'm hanging back towards the back of the leg. So um, that's the biceps femoris. And then as I angle back towards the condyle, I get this 
this here, which is the, where are you there? Lateral collateral ligament. Okay. And this is what we were talking about in the, in the knee with the inverted Z for Zorro. So you go that, that, and then the ITB is, is um, from Gerdes tubercle. So you can remember it that way for the inverted Zorro. That's the, that's the ITB. Okay, so any other questions out there for us, uh, Steve? I don't think there is. I always like to double check. a bit of detail there today. I think that was a good, good session on there. Uh, yeah, covered it in, yeah, in great, great. Di great depth. Yeah, I think uh, I haven't got any questions coming at the moment. I'll give people a chance now to get, get their questions in quickly. Uh, seems like a good time to maybe slowly wrap it up. Adrian Abid, thank you ever so much. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. See you next week.